Each morning at 645, this is where Maurice Freeman grieves. His way of moving on. The site where three of his Brooks County players died one month before the high school football season. I really try to take them in as my sons. We try to teach them life lessons and and we lost them. So, you know, um, I just I don't know how I'm going to get over this. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get over this. A single car accident took the lives of seniors Jakari Watkins and Sean Waters and junior Johnny Parker. Watkins's SUV slammed into a tree. Police cite driver error and speeding as the cause. I can remember talking to Sean. You know, we're just having a few laughs, dancing a little bit in the weight room. And I remember breaking it down out of the huddle. And um, we went our separate ways. And before I came down the street, I can just remember the car being right around the tree. And I can remember calling his name, and there was no answer. And we seen the truck uh, stuck up in the tree, and we're like, we're like we're just, we everybody hopped out of the car and tried to go get him. And it, was just, it was just a bad day. Water's brother, Devron Whitfield, was also involved in the crash. He survived. You know what I think every time I walk by the tree? I see that truck right around that tree. Freeman, the head coach of the Trojans, kept their jerseys, reminding the team they have more to play for. I really want the boys back. I really don't think it's fair. When we first started, it was hard. We couldn't get ourselves motivated. We, we couldn't get ourselves going. But right now, it's like we're dedicating every day, every rep to them. The mood at practice has changed. Tears now tackled by sweat and ambition. The Trojans searching for three starting linebackers. Right now, we just got to get past the football game um, because that's, that's where it all started. It started at football practice. Whitfield has returned to the Trojans. He declined to comment for this story. But Freeman says Whitfield will wear his brother's number 32 this season. One of three numbers the boys see often when they pass the site. Now a place of solace to speak to their friends. Sometimes I throw my 3-2 um, or I throw my 4 just to represent them, let them know that we still here and we're going to do our thing for them. The Trojans know they'll be playing with them. Jason Kahn, WCTV Eyewitness Sports. It's a personal fight for me because I've fought through life on a lot of different areas. Suzanne Simpson is punching away her past, preparing for her first career amateur MMA fight at the gym Train Fight Win. But unfortunately, her past can never escape her. Whatever this girl does to me damage-wise, I've been through it ten times worse. Two years ago, right after Thanksgiving, Simpson started a bonfire in her backyard, and it exploded in front of her. She was rushed here to Tallahassee Memorial Hospital and then airlifted to Shands in Gainesville. Forty-eight percent of her body covered in third-degree burns. She spent a week in intensive care. When you look in the mirror and your face does not look like who you used to be, your lips are swollen, your skin's just flaking off, people look at you different, too. The 30-year-old skin is more delicate than others. I've sparred her. I've got... 75 pounds on her and she still bites the mouthpiece and comes storming in so pain's not really going to upset her. My skin is a little bit thinner than most people's and I can get a little bit more damage to it but that's just that's secondary. Stepping into the cage is primary. It's going to be a great feeling. Win, lose, draw, it's going to be a great feeling. A new chapter in her life. Hi. Jason Kahn, WCTV Eyewitness Sports. Welcome to Sports Extra, everyone. I'm Jason Kahn. Florida State facing their one and only FCS team this season in Bethune Cookman from the MEAC. Bethune is 3 0. A win against Florida International from the FBS last week. A win for the Seminoles today marks a couple of noteworthy milestones. It would give Jimbo Fisher the highest winning percentage in ACC history, and it would be the program's 500th win. Bunch of theatrics before the game tonight. Parachuters landing on Bobby Bowden Field. Chief Osceola planting the spear with Renegade, and I think that's enough to scare a team away. Early first quarter, Quentin Williams running out of the pocket, then looking to pass. He does, but to the wrong guy, or I guess the right guy in our case, right? Valdosta's Telvin Smith, a 68-yard return. Get up if you're in the Azalea City or if you're in Dope Campbell Stadium. 
FAMU head football coach Earl Holmes brought his team into Ohio Stadium on Friday right after they landed. He said he wanted to get those oohs and ahs out of their system before game time. The Rattlers playing in front of about 103,000 people. That'll make you ooh and ah. Ohio State is 3-0, and oh, ranked fourth in the country, averaging 44 points per game. Out of the shotgun. Guys, hands it off. Ohio State's first drive, Jordan Hall, one of two touchdowns for him. Buckeyes up seven. Kenny Guyton, Ohio State's backup quarterback, making his third straight start. Jeff Hireman in, two-point conversion, no good, 13-0. Valdosta State opens conference play tonight against Shorter, a program in its second year at the Division II level. The Hawks have lost both of their games this year. The Blazers are coming off a bye week. That's a two-week layoff since their season opening win on September 7th. Gabby alum Willie Downs leads the Blazers in receiving. Was a top recruit in 2009 in the country. The junior's first year with the team here. First quarter, that's Caden Cochran hooking up with Downs, number 13, at three catches for 34 yards. In the second quarter, Cochran looking for someone to throw to. Why not Shontavious Jones? Jones also had three catches for 34 yards. 7-0 VSU. The VSU defense showing no rust from that two-week layoff. On the botch snap, Jeremy Grable recovers and makes a big return. Defense shuts out shorter in the first half. Austin Scott had a big game for Valdosta State. 125 yards for the night. He goes up the middle there for the score. VSU dominates 41-0. Cochran finishes with 177 yards and throws three touchdowns. Mentioned Austin Scott earlier. He had a game high 125. And Reggie Lewis led the receivers today with 91 yards and a score. Don't go away. We've got more Florida State football to talk about, and we'll hear from the Knowles. Plus, Lincoln alum Reggie Davis breaks a Georgia school record. That's next on Sports Extra. When they do the screen talk over here. Aisha Small Get ball, match up. is one of the top girls high school basketball players in the country. Tennessee, Maryland, Georgia. She has offers from almost every major Division I program. Ball, 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 ball. This is her first year, though, at Florida High. The six-foot guard moved here from Miami, a move the basketball prep community initially called foul. They wasn't with me on nights when I cried and I had to call her. Sophomore year, March 2011, Aisha returned home from a playoff game to tragic news. Her mother, Michelle Robinson, died of a heart attack at 48 years old. She went to all of my games. She never missed a game. Always was with my mom. To be honest, right now, I still don't accept the fact that she's gone, but I know deep down inside that she's in my heart. Aisha and her younger brother, Marvin, were left without parents. Years earlier, their father passed away. One time I came back down to Miami from being out of town, and then the next thing I know, I was taken away to foster care. Throughout the next 15 months, the kids shifted from home to home. But Aisha played through her junior year at Dr. Crop High School. Last season, her team came up short in the Class 8A state championship game. Then I ended up playing travel ball for my coach, Coach Kim Davis. That's when we kind of knew going into the summer, and then right after the summer, it's, something isn't right. Did you put your shots up today? Kimberly Davis Powell coaches Aisha on the Essence AAU travel team. She and her husband offered the kids a place to live in Tallahassee. All we thought about is what do we need to do to help these kids and the rest will fall into place. Even as Davis Powell applied for adoption, she heard a lot of negativity. It was bad. It was bad. You only want her because she's a ball player. But the 38-year-old already has one adopted child and is a legal guardian to four others. That's not including the two new members of the family. I've been involved with girls since for 15 years, some kids who have been in some pretty bad situations and we've just kind of helped out and I've opened up our home. Davis Powell filed the adoption papers last February. 10 months later, on November 15th, it became official. It was just like, whew, it's over. Now we can live our lives. The same feeling Aisha will have when making a college decision. Rutgers. It's between Rutgers, South Carolina, and Baylor. It would just be someone I know that I would want to spend the rest of my four years at that will basically be my second family. The day Aisha signs, she'll have her family. Her mom will be watching from above and right there on the court. Jason Kahn, WCTV Eyewitness Sports.